Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am joined by Jeff Mulvihill, who is the brand manager at Mapex Drums. Jeff, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Bart. Great to be here. Thrilled to be a part of this today. Very cool. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, Mapex is, I mean, in the big picture of drums, it's a relatively young brand um, that I personally don't know a ton about. I've played them. They're beautiful drums. Um, so I'm excited to to hear about the origins of this this amazing company. Right. Uh, the, the brand uh, is 30 years young. Uh, we just celebrated the 30th anniversary of Mapex um, last year in 2019. Um, and we're part of a, a much bigger story, though, that I'm going to sort of take us back a little bit further than 30 years and talk a little bit about um, the parent company and the origins. And we, for that, we go back almost 80 years now. And our uh, parent company entity is called KHS, um, well known around the industry uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and what I want to, uh, sort of share with the listening audience here is that those three letters, K H S actually stand for something that, uh, is pretty cool. And, um, I'd like to make sure everybody understands the, the letters K H S stand for three words in Mandarin, and I'm going to mispronounce it like I always do because my Chinese is terrible, but uh, <laughs> those three words mean or are Kong Shu She. Okay. And what that means is contribution to school and society. So that sounds, if you're sitting at home listening to a, a drum show, that sounds, oh, this guy's getting a little <laughs> little academic and a little philosophical and a little heady all at the same time. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's true it it's a it's a a company at the with with a value that goes right to the to the core value of the company wanting to make a meaningful difference um, to music musicians and students in the community and that's kind of where the roots of the company start um, in Taiwan uh, where this company traces its roots to they don't have school music like we do in the USA for we or we have been for you know for many years ever uh, quite a few of us grow up through you know joining the school band in fourth or fifth or sixth grade and kind of tinking around with the band and then maybe by accident we get in a garage band and we start playing drums and it, it turns into something meaningful for us uh, long term they don't they don't have music in the in the public school system so KHS started as a network of community music schools. Okay. So it'd be okay. like uh, after school, maybe some kids go to the YMCA to play basketball or something. Some kids go to a KHS school and play music or have a lesson or something like this. So it started as a network of music schools throughout Taipei city. And I think a little bit further out than that eventually. And it's sort of then moved into uh, a little bit of retail as that started to grow. They started to sell sheet music and music stands and small instruments and basic things like this, right? Um, and then it started to grow and grow. And then at the, uh, at the vision of um, a man named Wu Shi, uh started manufacturing in, in a big way with um, investment into um, truly wholly owned manufacturing facilities. Um, and really the story really blossoms from there um, because the, the, the manufacturing portion of the strategy started as making things for other people. So it was a musical instrument manufacturing entity making a variety of different products for a variety of other brands some of them that we know uh, today. So some of them, um, some of the big brands in the industry today would have been KHS customers, okay? Um, yeah. And they made uh, musical items. Some of them came to the USA at that time, a lot of it uh, in other parts of the world. But the business grew and grew and grew. And as the manufacturing business grew, it, it occurred to 
uh, Wu and others at KHS that, hey, maybe it's time that we start making our own stuff. So in addition to making items and musical instruments and musical products for others, that's when we see the beginning of uh, the brand Jupiter Band Instruments. Hmm. So if anyone out there was in band or perhaps your brother or sister um, play a different instrument like a trumpet or a saxophone or a trombone, maybe the first instrument they rented joining school band was a Jupiter instrument. Hmm. Wow. Jupiter instruments then come to the United States in 1985, where um, the first facility was in Austin, Texas, for the distribution of those uh, of uh, Jupiter Winds and Brass. So, as you sort of move through the life cycle of a manufacturing company, they started with the horns, among other things, and it came time to look at, well, how do we grow? And uh, the decision was then made to, let's make our own drums. Um, and that's where we see the beginnings of what is today Mapex drums. Wow. That's interesting. Now, can I yeah. ask you, so this all started, if my math is correct, um, you said it's about 80 years ago. So this started in like the, it's 2020 right now. So like in the 40s, is that Correct, like 1930s, 1940s? Yes, KHS in general as a whole, yes. Cool. Wow, that's so, I mean, what a... Yeah. The longevity of this company is unbelievable. Right, and, and so if we see Jupiter, I, I you know, I, I sound like I know exactly what I'm talking about with these timelines, It's uh, uh, and I mostly do, but it's possible that I'm... I'm using the the year 1985 for Jupiter Band Instruments. That's the year in earnest when we see them in the USA. It's possible okay. that it was a little bit longer than that. But so to 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 this 80 years old discussion, uh, if we were thinking about 1985, you know, it was 40 or 45 years before they started making their own stuff, um, even which is which is, you know. Uh, it's pretty cool that you get that under your belt. You get some money in the bank. You make your make some facilities. You sort of sharpen your manufacturing skills doing this, doing that, um, yeah. before you then have the experience to um, bring your own thing to market. And in a, bi yeah. in a big way, I mean, Jupiter is not a small amount of uh, school music business. It's a, it's a big part of the market share. And so if we're using 1985 as a guide for Jupiter, we use 1989 as a guide for Mapex. That's when we first see Mapex drums in the USA. And um, uh, Bart, you and I are about the same age. We're, I remember Mapex sort of showing up when I was um, in eighth or ninth grade. Yeah. Um, most of us were fans of a number of other drum companies around uh, at the time, some of them American, some of them from other places. But Mapex starts to show up in 1989. Um, and it, it's, it's a little bit interesting. They chose Nashville as their, uh, point of entry and it was first a part of the distribution, um, wing of the Gibson company. Interesting. So I'm going to tell you a little bit, this is an interesting, you know, the, the podcast is called drum history, right? So <laughs> this touches a, a little bit of other drum history too. Um, yeah. KHS began making Mapex drums from, um, at the entry level, or the first product introduced was the Mars series, which was strategically placed to literally be a, um, a competitor with the Pearl Export, which mm -hmm. at the time just that was taking the market by storm, right? That whole idea of a full drum set in a couple of boxes for one price. Uh, yeah. That really changed things uh, for the drum business on the American landscape. Um, mm -hmm. And so, Mapex followed suit with that strategy, and the Mars series was the first product to come in from, uh, manu or from the Taiwanese uh, manufacturing wing. But they knew that a fully rounded out drum brand needs a few different products, right? You have to have a high end, a middle end, a, a low end. You to, to really touch all of the business. And 
making drums at a very high level for professional level quality was something they just weren't ready to do. So, or weren't ready to do themselves, I should say. Sure. So, as the agreement was made with the Gibson Company for distribution and warehousing in the USA, um, they also started producing some of the first Mapex Maple high-end professional drums out of that facility. And some other names, um, like Sam Bacco was uh, in charge of the manufacturing. Um, he and another couple of gentlemen uh, put the program together for the Gibson Company. Um, and we're making the pro-level product right here in Nashville. Um, and it was actually, uh, you know, a pretty serious product. They made... Um, they got the hardware and some of the appointments from um, from KHS in Asia, and then they were building the shells and cutting the edges and doing the lacquering. Um, that experiment um, lasted for a few short years, um, and in those early days, uh, there were a, a, a pretty serious, um, impressive number of endorsers, really. Um, Billy Cobham was on Mapex in the beginning. Terry, oh, yeah. Terry Bozio was on Mapex in the beginning, and Mike, Por huh. Mike Portnoy was another one. Um, and the, the thing was, you know, with the, those three guys, if you're, if you're a drummer at, at all, you know that they all play monster drum kits, right? Yeah. So those guys took a lot of support, um, and deservedly so. They're artists and extremely well regarded drummers at a very high level. Um, and it was, it was a you know a big chunk to bite off at the very beginning. So as those guys in the Gibson shop were bringing that professional level product to market, supporting artists like those guys I just mentioned, um, you know, it was a lot to to take on and maybe a little bit too much, perhaps. Uh, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But as that was sort of Moving ahead in a reasonable fashion, they were developing their high-level product in Asia, which then, once was ready, became the Mapex Orion series, which I think a lot of your listeners will have heard of. That was the sure. the legendary Mapex Maple series in the high end. And so the arrangement with, with Gibson and Sam and those guys in the shop only lasted, uh, I want to say, uh, it was only four or five years. There from between like maybe even less, it may have been only three or four years between 1989 or so and 1992 or three, uh, depending on the overlap. And then, you know, Mapex opened their own facility in the Nashville area and started doing the whole brand hardware, pedals, snare drums, you know, a variety of drum kits priced in a variety of price points um, in their own right. And then sort of as Gibson found themselves without a drum brand, enter that Gibson era of Slingerland. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so they went out and found or made a partnership or had an opportunity to to do that very same sort of model um, with the Slingerland brand with with Sam and those guys as the as the guys in the shop making those. And they had a very successful run uh, in the beginning with with those products. So that's kind of where it starts. Um, from Apex, and once our own facility was uh, up and running in Nashville, um, the rest of the history is is fairly well documented now. Uh, on through the rest of the '90s and 2000s, um, the facility, which I say Nashville area, it was in Laverne, Tennessee. Um, that facility and the aforementioned Jupiter facility in Austin, Texas. Uh, sort of both fast forward to the year 2009 uh, or 2008, perhaps eight or nine, um, where all of it, all of those companies came to the Nashville area in a new building in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, where we're proudly housed today with office mm -hmm. and warehouse, um, doing all of our products uh, here in the USA, all the KHS brands represented um, in our one large distribution uh and marketing facility um and so we're, we're i've told you a little bit about the beginning as 
as those years progressed, you know, enter Mapex drums. Um, we also see the introduction of Hercules microphone stands. Um, we've got ukuleles. Uh, we've got um, a number of other products and a number of other spaces under the KHS umbrella. Um, yeah, they do a ton. I mean, you guys, I should say, have a ton of brands. I mean, it's so yeah. cool, but you don't get the feeling that like, uh, you don't get the feeling that it's just a ton of, um, like they're just slapping logos on things and just churning stuff out. Like it seems like, like every division is very like professional. I mean, it's not like it's, uh, you know, just get it out. Now we do drums. Now we do this. Like you can tell, I love how they, they came through Gibson and just started that process. Cause it's like, why waste time? You know, start building the drums, get the name out there more, um, kick it off with big players. Like you said, like, and I remember seeing Mike Portnoy playing, uh, playing Mapex and, I always mention on the show, those endorsers are really how, you know, a young kid in the 90s, that's how they see it. And they go, oh, my God, I need to get, you know, I need to play <laughs> Mapex. Very, very cool story so far. Well, thanks for the compliment. We like to think everything's well thought out. We like to think everything is at a professional level. We work, yeah. we work really hard for that. Um, and I, I appreciate the props there. It's a um, it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's funny um, if you have one brand that does all of your products that presents a little bit of a challenge if you have multiple brands that you need to market and present all of your products that's another set of challenges and i think uh those different parent company setups are interest to watch or interesting to watch uh, from an industry standpoint um i'm not sure that there's a perfect way to do it but we've got uh this model here where where um it it has come and gone. At one time, we were 20, 22 brands or something. Now it's been pared back a Jeez. little bit for one reason or another over the over the years. I joined the company in twenty twelve, and um, um, it seems like uh, it's been nothing but progress since then. As I <laughs> sort of will pat myself on the back <laughs> yeah. behind my microphone here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, it just keeps getting better. Now, pretty obvious question, but what does Mapex mean? Like, what is Mapex? Does that stand for something? Ah, that is a little bit of a legend. Um, hmm. There's a couple of different interpretations. Um, it It's not something that we use. It's not an acronym for anything today that we use. We simply use the word as the brand for the drums these days. But sure. it did trace its origins back to that beginning time um, as they were bringing drums to the market. Uh, there was maybe a very short time when drums were made with Jupiter badges. Mm -hmm. So it starts there and then they sort of knew or perhaps figured out quickly that that wasn't exactly going to work very well. So the word Mapex, M-A-P-E-X, traces back to an acronym that starts with made in America percussion experiment. Wow. Or it's been said that it perhaps because the, the first pro level products were maple shells, maple American percussion experiment. Hmm. And for the company um, producing their own drums for the first time, they thought of it as, Hey, let's try this. And so it was labeled as an experiment, and it was labeled as uh, something to do in the USA, being the biggest market on earth for drums and drum sets. Um, and that's where it kind of comes from, probably on someone's um, product planning memo desk at a factory someplace. Yeah, yeah, really. You know, it's interesting, too, because I Googled it, right? Like, kind of real quick earlier and and um and i i forgot it actually and there's another definition on, on wikipedia which you're the guy so it's this is probably not true but it also said music and percussion excellence like ex is excellence is that not on there that, is that is that a comp <laughs> yeah, that you know what that might very well be part of it as well i'm not sure anyone that i've talked to can tell me the exact thing i've heard yeah. i've heard those three examples sure um over the years that's funny that that music and percussion excellence kind of reminds me of contribution to school and society like these just very like sure 
um, like uh, descriptive um, titles, which I would imagine that's more in the Chinese culture versus American stuff where you wouldn't have it be exactly like that kind of like um, that, that using those descriptive words, but um, very cool. I mean, I, I can't, I think I told you on that when we, when we kind of talked on the pre-interview I had at one point, I believe it was a um, God, what is the lower, help me out with the, the models here. What is the lower end model? That's the beginner. I think it was a, is there's a Venus kit, isn't there? There was at one time. Yes. Venus would okay. have been uh, one of the entry level products. Sure. Yeah. So I had a Venus kit that I picked up. I had a period there where I was kind of buying and selling and I had a bunch of drum students and I'd buy them and I'd say, Hey, this is a good kit. And they would trust me and I would sell it to them. Um, and I played them for a little bit and they were wonderful drums, but I actually traded them for a mini bike because <laughs> I, got, I All right. had like a, a music <laughs> space where I would just go and ride it. And then, uh, I realized a grown man shouldn't be riding a mini bike. Um, <laughs> so I sold the mini bike, but, uh, that was my brief, uh, Mapex experience. Well, and you, even that, you need to post some pictures of that. <laughs> I know. I have one. There's one video on my my personal Instagram. It was a little Coleman mini bike. But even on that lower, I don't say lower end, on that beginner uh, Mapex kit, the hardware was great. I mean, stuff was like it felt very solid, and it, that had to be just from the look and the the sizes. I think it was like a kind of a '90s kit, maybe early 2000s. But but even that had really high quality. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's been a part of what uh, the success story is here. Um, they were, or Mapex has always been known uh, for quality at a very attractive price, um, and that was that has been or was the strategy uh, from the very beginning. I think there were some good minds at work. Um, if you're if you're a factory owner. If you have your own factory, the the strategy is got to be keep your factory working and keep your factory producing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so moving units and producing good, reliable volume is what makes you profitable at the factory level. Uh, there are many around in the industry here, a, a ton of brands that don't truly own their own manufacturing they yeah. outsource to others and have different sources do different parts of uh, whether it be metal goods or wood shells or finishing there are any number of processes and other uh, outsource entities that do part or some of that work for big brands um, yeah. that presents its own other so sort of set of challenges, right? Because if if you've if you've got a great shell source and a great chrome source, and then your paint guy goes out of business, you you've got to work to find somebody who can paint your drums, or vice versa. If your metal goods supplier goes out, or if they're full this month, or you know, we're talking about Chinese and Asian manufacturing in general. If you've got a metal plating facility that just got you know, they just want a contract for Toyota or something. Maybe your boom stands aren't going to make it this month. Um, <laughs> it, you know, just, I mean, that's a that's a very yeah. true deal. Where sure some of those facilities produce scooter parts and electronics and car industry um, parts of the business. So if you're not yeah. if, if you're outsourced like that, you just got to play that game all the time. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, can I ask you a little bit about like I'm curious about. Okay, so you we were just talking about the manufacturing in China and stuff, obviously. Are there a lot of brands? Um, what would my question be? So Mapex is a drum brand that is, you know, it is a Chinese brand that is like they're their own company. Now, you said earlier, like you said, there's a lot of manufacturing where there will be drum brands that are um, like Premier or a brand that's, you know, it's a British drum company, but everything's really made in China. Um, are there a lot of other brands that are Chinese drum brands that are sold in America? Is there anyone else? I can't think of other brands that are, um, like I know of a lot of Japanese drum companies, sure. obviously, but do you, do you know my, does that make sense? Like, it does. It, it, there is of, of Chinese origin. No, there are not, there are not a great, a great deal. Um, 
Japanese, yes. Um, and of course, we know all of the famous American brands. And yep. of course, uh, Premier, you mentioned, is a historic British brand. Um, Chinese, there are not very many in the States. There is more Chinese manufacturing in China that produces products that we don't ever see here under different brands that don't really make it outside of Asia. But I would, I, I'm, you put me on the spot and I hadn't really thought of that in a long time. Oh, sure. And I'm, I'm going to make sure I check my own facts here, but I, I think I can confidently say that Mapex would be the leading Taiwanese slash Chinese brand sure. wholly owned and manufactured. Is that, does that put enough That's, of a frame around it? To, to yes, <laughs> it, it does. And I should have said Taiwanese as opposed to Chinese. But and yeah. I'm, I'm interested in that whole, and this is not even a question as much of a thought for maybe a few et- future episode, but of like in America, there's the whole, like there's so many people, like there's so many boutique drum brands who are really cool. I wonder in like the, the Far East market, if there's like, or in, you know, other, I mean, Europe is different. I know that's there, but like of people of those mom and pop, like small drum shops making shells and creating their own stuff, obviously just for the Taiwanese, Chinese, the, that market. But it's interesting to think of that in different countries. Um, if there's I, a boutique um, world there. I I don't know, but my first instinct is I, I don't think that many, if, if, yeah. if many at all. Um, gotcha. Uh, and I don't know why I, I say that. I've, I've been I've been to Asia a few times in a few different places, and I just don't think the market is the same. Yeah. Uh, even with the same level of musicianship and or music fandom that we see in the Western world, I think there's a a great interest in learning to play music. I don't think the economic uh extra spending cash exists for a great deal of the population to be able to sure uh afford a custom design boutique type of product now yeah uh, interesting. with uh, every, somebody out there is going to listen and say ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about and, and i'm <laughs> you're right i don't i'm a little bit <laughs> guessing here but that's my experience and my sort of uh take on it to that question okay. yeah yeah. No, and I'm I'm like just throwing something completely random at you, just a thought. But um okay, now and I mentioned this um to you on the phone before. I also think of of Mapex as like Klaus Hessler. There's a lot of these really high level um I don't want to call them like mega drummers. You could you could say like like a drummer who's known for being a drummer as opposed to a drummer who is a guy who plays in a band who's a really great drummer, but he's known for being the drummer in that band. You get a lot of Mapex has a Mm -hmm. lot of clinician soloist independent drummers on your roster where um, I made the comparison in in my mind of like Ibanez guitars. I think of like Steve Vai. I think of these guys who are shredders who who really like that guitar. And yeah, you guys have a great roster of just like independent guys who they play in bands, obviously, but really amazing drummers play mapex right and um yeah i we're we're proud of our guys we're proud of our our artist relations effort the roster is is a strong one um klaus hessler the great german um it, it, he's got hands from heaven um and feet to go along with it he's a phenomenal artist uh achilles priester is a just yeah. a monster drummer um yeah Guys like, uh, you know, Dom Famulero has been on Mapex mm-hmm. for a long time. I don't think I need to go into what his reach is around the world. Yeah. He's loved and, and well-respected among the drummers and drum community worldwide. Um, yeah. Guys like Russ Miller, who's a, you know, needs very little introduction from me. His, his studio credits and educational and artist credits go, go a long way. Um, I'm I'm thrilled that recently I say recently in the drum world is within the last couple of years, right? Um, uh, Jeff Hamilton is a Mapex drummer. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of as you sort of said, drummers who are known as drummer slash drummer artists, right? Um, yep. We do have guys like Rashid Williams who's known for 
touring with John Legend, um, Tyler Ritter in Moon Taxi, guys who are known for playing for artists or playing in bands. And that is a valuable part of drum marketing and a valuable part of our artist roster. But, um, but the drummer artist is, uh, is an interesting and it, you just got to have them to, to be uh, strongly represented. Yeah. It's the, it's the magazine readers. It's the people who are watching out for those guys. Your, you know, independent drummers are uh, the people who are buying drums, not to say that everyone else isn't buying drums, but, but that's your audience. So it's a, and, and, you know, they're choosing you. I would, I would imagine you're not going out and trying to like, you know, I mean, these people clearly like the quality. Most drummers don't play stuff they don't like just for, you know, um, gear, which, well, a lot of people, I guess some people do, <laughs> do do that, but I don't think that's the case with you guys. These guys really love the drums. Yeah. And you know, the, we, we try to, we try to be a good tight crew of pals and, you know, we try to be drummer buddies to, to the guys that are on the roster here. It's a, it's more than just the gear. It, it, it is a lot about the gear, but it's not all about the gear. It's about um, sharing in each other's success, leaning on each other when we need each other, you know? Um, yeah. And especially, I got to give a shout out to the Mapex artist roster during this period of uh, COVID-19 quarantine and beyond. You know, we've we've sort of come together and and tried to figure out ways to lift each other up um, you know, some of our, uh, well, I don't think there's anybody touring right now. Um, no. and you know, recording is, is hit or miss depending on where you are and what's possible. Um, so trying to share opportunities and talk about ideas together as a, between brand and artist has been something that, um, has been really neat lately. Um, and I totally, I, it's, it's, it's tough to talk about it, it for me because um, yeah. so many of my colleagues in other drum brands are struggling right now. There's a lot of furlough. There's a lot of uh, uh, just downturn in the market that's affecting uh, the MI community. And I'm thankful to, to our leadership at KHS America for keeping us mostly intact throughout this uh, struggling period. You know, we've, we've had, a little bit of uh, a very little bit of downsizing and a very little bit of furlough time. But for the most part, through all of it, we've been able to stay active, stay in business, communicating with the retail community on how we can do things different uh, or better or in a pivotal way to, to meet the different demands of um, who's open and who's not and who can only do curbside and who can only do online yeah. and who can, you know, it's a, it's a shifting thing where the pendulum is swinging a bunch of different ways very quickly. Um, so, yeah. um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's just a weird, weird period of time that we find ourselves in. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, it's so it's, it's, it's not just the drum industry. It's not just the music industry. It's, it's, it's just so many different things. Um, but I think it's great that you guys are, remaining for the most part intact. Um, now backing up a little bit. So we were in the nineties, we were in the two thousands. I understand it kind of just continued as, as normal, but I think people really like to hear about when like the different lines came out and about the different, um, you know, drums you guys offer. So through the nineties, then into the two thousands, what were some, um, you know, what were some pivotal pieces of, of gear and lines of drums that came out, um, going up through, you know, modern days? Well, one of the uh, the cornerstones that came out of the early days um, is the Mapex Saturn series. Um, I mentioned earlier, and you did too, we had Mars and Venus kind of in the low end. The Saturn was has always kind of sat at the middle or up, upper middle. And then in the early days, we had Orion as the flagship professional level uh, branded gear once mm -hmm. Mapex was fully um, outfitted in the USA. and you know, the Orion series uh, didn't last the long test of time. It was um, uh, not a not a high end product that that stood through the trending changes. It you know it had diecast hoops, it had thick maple shells. It was really in vogue 
in the in the 90s it was that 90s thing sure. um saturn is something altogether different though it, it has been brought to market in several different iterations um several different uh monikers whether it be saturn 4 saturn 5 saturn 3 um and what's come out of that is sort of what we kind of consider the basis of the Mapex DNA these days, and that is blended shell technology, where we take different plies of wood and combine them for a specific sound. So Saturn has always been a blend of either birch and walnut or maple and walnut in different iterations over the years. And um, as we've sort of come through the 2000s, um, we see Saturn a few different ways through the first 10 years. And then in 2014, I think is the pivotal year where we actually see Saturn V settling into maple walnut blended shells um, as the main cornerstone with an outer exotic veneer and some very stunning lacquer finishes. Saturn V mm. has been a real hit if you look at the Saturn timeline. Um, and that was a very successful run, say, between, let's say, between 2014 and present day, which gives me the opportunity to say that we've sort of split now for for 2020 we've well 2020 and 2021 we've split saturn into two different uh categories now we've we've sort of dispensed with the roman numeral moniker we we laugh to ourselves sometimes once we reached saturn 5 it started to feel a little bit like a rocky movie or a or like a horror movie yeah, or, something. or a yeah or yeah. like a toto record yeah um, they just keep going up <laughs> how high can you go right an iphone it's like they got to stop at some point right <laughs> so uh, in 2020 we see saturn it's basically just called saturn it is a uh, uh the the maple and walnut blended shell stays with some simple lacquer finishes at a very uh, you know, a pro level product at a at a very approachable price, and then we see coming in 2021 in the USA what we're calling Saturn Evolution. Saturn Evolution oh. it takes takes the whole thing up a couple of notches with um, with nine different configurations, nine different finishes, a whole new uh, mounting system, and the opportunity to choose between the legendary birch walnut blended shell or maple walnut blended shell to sort of create your own preferred drum set recipe. Hmm. Okay. So awesome. the, the tricky part of that on the business end is that you are offering all of the same finishes and configurations in a couple of different shell types. So the mathematics gets a little bit uh, strewn out there when you're talking about levels of inventory, but we believe, yeah, yeah we believe that, that uh, we're a herd, we're, we're, we're a herd, a unique species who who need choices, don't we, Bart? We want <laughs> we do. We want sizes and sounds and materials yeah. and uh, we, well, that's kind of the I joke a lot with with colleagues and say, you know, there are Murphy's laws of the drum business, right? Where where yep. you're having a conversation with somebody and they're like, man, that sounds awesome and it looks great, but do you have it in a twenty? <laughs> or, exactly. Or, or do you have it in maple mahogany that, blend? That's right. Of this? It's like, oh god. Yeah. So all of yeah. those, all of those drummer conversations sort of come together with this philosophy behind Saturn Evolution, where um, it might be nice to have a drum set where you've got uh, a maple walnut kick drum, or uh, with outfitted with birch walnut toms. Um, it might be nice to have a full maple kit. For one thing, a birch walnut kit for another, and it looks the same. Um, different sizes in the same finishes, different shell types in the same finishes. You can kind of, yeah. kind of uh, build your own dream slash monster, however you see, <laughs> however you see fit. It's really a drummer's nightmare and daydream come true. Exactly, so many options. <laughs> can you explain maybe so when people get to the 
you know, if they're looking at getting a Saturn kit, the sonic difference between the maple walnut and the birch walnut, like how do those, how are they different? Sure. Um, the the answer to that is not altogether different from what we understand those materials do, right? I think mm-hmm. everyone can agree that birch is a nice, clean, and clear um, sort of pre-EQ'd kind of material. Maple is a nice, warm, and mid-tone heavy tone wood. Enter the walnut with each one of those, and it brings the darkness. Okay, <laughs> you add yep. you add that. Um, little bit of darker tone wood walnut is is well known, like mahogany or um, other very warm, rich tone woods. Where if it's a hundred percent walnut kit, it really, to most of our ears, it gives you even too much of that good stuff. If you can think of that, yeah, sure. it it sounds really it it can sound very low, tubby, thuddy, mm-hmm, which. Mm-hmm. Look, if that's your thing, if that's what you're looking for, that's fantastic. Sometimes that's necessary. I'm not sure that's going to be necessary for most general playing. Let's just keep it safe before all the naysayers start commenting on both of our Facebook pages that we don't know what we're talking about. But (laughs) um, if you you have 100% birch kit and 100% maple kit, those are two... uh, different world standard in the drum business. What we've done is sort of taken those two standards, added the walnut to both in typical Mapex blended shell fashion. And that way it gives you a little bit of that dark, warm, rich tone complementing your favorite main character. So if you're a birch mm, if you're cool. if you're a birch person, you know, if you that's your your deal for uh, maybe you like it the way it sounds on records or something like this, you've got a little bit of a warm rich character along with your favorite birch style if you're a maple guy or girl add in a little bit of walnut and you've got a richer rounder maple experience it's it's that hybrid philosophy behind what we're doing here yeah no that makes perfect sense kind of the best of both worlds without having too much of one thing which as we know you can and you know you pay a lot of money for a drum set it's nice to have a little bit of it dialed in to be not not too much birch, not too much maple, not too much walnut. Um, so, man, that's really cool. It sounds like you guys are, it's a very innovative company. Um, how does it work? Now, You just you and your job. So um, this is a Mapex episode, but you're also the brand manager with Sonar as well. And, and KHS, Sonar is a uh, KHS company. Um, do you guys, like... How does it work with a company that owns multiple drum companies for like divvying up ideas? I mean, you guys, it seems like you're all completely separate, if if that makes sense. Do do they share any like, hey, this hardware is really cool. It could be good on sonar. It could be good with, you know, maybe this could work over here. Does any of that happen or are you guys completely like autonomous, separate um, entities? Well, uh, the short answer is it's all separate. Um, it all is divided pretty clearly, um, and for good reason. I think both brands occupy their own place in the drumming world. Um, there are different histories. There are different, uh, manufacturing details. There are different specs. There are different materials. Um, they're both awesome, uh, but they are, they both sort of, Hold their own, okay, to to sort of answer your question. Now, to reel that back just a little bit, some of the metal goods and some of the basic hardware pieces and things like this are made in the same facilities. Yeah. And some of the the high volume entry level uh, products, there aren't, there aren't many for sonar in the entry level. They're, they're, I, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. There will be in 2021. So some of that, Ooh. some of that is shared, but, but each have their own um, identity, their own DNA, their Absolutely. own vision for where the brands are going. So I'm lucky enough to be a part of each one of them right now. And I'm thrilled for that, but I want to sort of stick with Mapex for a second. Um, sure. Of course. And yeah. Mapex s- episode. Sort of, 
staying with your question on our innovation or we sound like we're innovators and and I I I think that's right we we look to the future we're looking for um nothing but what can improve and enhance what drummers are looking for today trying to stay ahead of that that curve as much as we can and some of that hybrid shell technology has been with us for a little bit and we take it um a step further from even Saturn and we, we sort of started this line of uh, conversation about the lines of the of the brand and the series and so we've, we've sort of explained the Saturn cornerstone um, above Saturn in the lineup is our Black Panther design lab series yeah. where where we've taken some of that um, let's call it uh, I don't want to say basic that's the wrong word I want to say um, more straight ahead drum innovation mm -hmm. that we see with Saturn um, and Orion and sort of even taken it up a couple of notches and pushed it over the cliff uh, in some ways with, with Black Panther Design Lab where we see blended shells of maple and mahogany. We see different bearing edges um, on the tops of shells from the bottom where you really start to dial in each side of the drum. Uh, we see innovations like the articulating floor tom leg where you can actually EQ the resonance of your floor tom um, without mutes or muffles or, wow. or tape. Yeah. Um, and some of the, the, the finishes are just absolutely stunning in the Design Lab series. And it sort of breaks into two where we've got the main flagship Versatis series drum set and the Cherry Bomb drum set. So, are, so, are, so the two offerings in the design lab right now where the Versatis features the, the blended shell of maple and mahogany. The Cherry Bomb is, is just a fantastic old school, round, rich 70s rock kind of thing where it's 100% cherry shell um, with partially rounded edges and our flagship sonic saver hoops that kind of are a, a throwback to the to the slingerland stick savers sure yeah um and that's been sort of a next level uh progress for the brand right so we're talking about it started with pretty basic high end middle end low end and it's sort of progressed from there to be outfitted from design lab down through Saturn. We've got the mid-level armory series, which we see um, we're talking about best of both worlds a minute ago. The armory series features blended shells of birch and maple. Um, so you really get the best uh, at a, at a sort of mid-level product. Um, and then we've got the current Mars series um, below that. And then we see our Storm series and the the Mapex Rebel at the very entry level of the market. Sure. So it's been you gotta have the entry level. Right. And it's it's sort of come from sort of three levels now to um a comfortable whatever I just mentioned, seven or yeah. six. Uh there are companies that have more, there are companies that have less. This mix right now feels pretty good for us. Um yeah. Brand wise, you know. Uh, yeah. Es especially with the combinations that you can do and you have the Black Panther design lab, you can do all that. But I think it's it's a very appropriate amount of uh, there are there's nothing wrong with having a ton more or a ton less. But um, some brands can have almost too many where you go, is this the model X or the model J or the model B? It's like it just gets a little bit confusing. So I think it's nice that it's clear. And I, I really like the um, um Kind of the what's the right word I'm looking for like the planetary uh, themes I think that's really cool sure you know, make makes it clear um, yeah and that's um, I, I I can't tell you how that started but you know if you go all the way back to where we started earlier in the conversation the first products they started making were called Jupiter band instruments exactly. uh, the stands and accessories are Hercules um, yeah. so it's got all of this sort of mythological thematic material to it that um, yeah. It's really awesome. a, a neat way to organize it, in in my opinion. I, I 
I think it's kind of cool. And um, yeah, it is. And the Black Panther logo, you that's just the, the Black Panther. The sets are beautiful. The snares you see very, very common. Just one of those like very uh, like it seems like it's one of those snares that is like when people have like a, you know, a snare shelf or whatever, there's typically a Black Panther in there um, just kind of as a a go to beautiful you know staple snare of a lot of people's collections yeah um the the black panther line has been uh one of uh, another cornerstone i would say um if if saturn is a cornerstone then black panther is the other corner or black panther snare drums for sure um there's been an awful lot of different iterations and um it's it's gotten a shot in the arm this year. We introduced 14 new Black Panther models here in 2020, um, cool. including some very, very exciting metal shells that we haven't seen before in the line. We bring aluminum back. We bring stainless steel back. Um, and it, it's, it's time. We've, we've lived with our current, or I'd say now former Black Panther lineup for nine or ten years, and it was time to really give it something special. Um, and these... This new, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be witty and make a, <laughs> a funny joke about this new herd of black panthers or this new, uh, the nope. new pack of panthers or whatever this yeah. is. Um, it's, it's some of the best snare drums that, uh, that Mapex has ever put on the market for sure. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think there's, I just love it that as we're recording this, it's obviously the world's kind of messed up. It's the COVID stuff, but there's a lot to look forward to, um, as far as new Mapex drums and the Saturn series and the Black Panther stuff. So um, that's great that it's just continues to move forward. And and I just, I love how it's like a drum company has been around for 30 years, 30 years. And we're, we're still calling it relatively young just because that's how our instrument is. It's like, you almost have to be around for, you know, 80, 90 years, which I know KHS has been around for 80 years, but um, I think you guys are, uh, Obviously, there's a long way to go because um, 30 years is like a blink of an eye in the big picture. No, it, so. it, it's true. Um, we we talk about things like brand equity and brand awareness and some of those sort of marketing concepts, but it, it just boils right back down to a musical instrument is personal. You know, yes. it's if you're if you truly love the music you're making, even if you sort of only like the music you're making, if you're just a once in a while hobbyist, yeah. chances are there's a reason or a uh, emotional connection to whatever instrument you're choosing, and then whatever brand of that instrument that you're choosing. I like this because of this connection. I like yeah. this because of is sound thing or i saw it with my favorite band or i saw it with my favorite drummer or the teacher that i learned from was a big part of my music making and that's what they recommended so it fit my whole thing like there's some sort of emotional connection to musicians and their instruments that's uh pretty important to what we do absolutely it's way more than the I don't want to call it superficial, but it's it's way more than like the like, you know, a 10 year old's not going, oh, man, I love the tonal qualities of that maple walnut blend. They're like, <laughs> they're more like, no, oh, that's I right. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a great drummer on YouTube playing these drums. Um, it's amazing. Great. I saw, you know, uh, my favorite drummer used it. My teacher, like you said, all that is so true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So as we get close to the end here, I mean, I think most people know where to find Mapex. I mean, they're they're everywhere. Like you can go to your local music shop. Is there any, any tips you want to, I mean, anything you want to say, where can people find you like social media, all that good stuff? Well, we're, we're in all of the places where people are. We're online everywhere. We, uh, we, like you said, we, we support, um, our national chain music retailers, our independent music retailers, um, international Music retailers. We're in Canada. Sure. We're in all over Europe, South America. Mapex is huge in Mexico. Um, mm, wow. It's 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 fun to watch. We can be found, uh, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Our mapexdrums dot com website has um, a wealth of current con- content. 
information. Uh, the 14 Black Panther snare drums that I just mentioned, I'll, I'll plug this real quick. If you want to hear them, there are video and sound files for each model uh, on the webpage uh, now in a couple of different uh, formats where, hey, if you just want to shop through or quickly click through and get a 10 to 12 second version of what each model sounds like, we've done that all the way up to a fully produced musical selection. So you can sort of take a deep dive on the one you like. You can get a quick bite for 10 or 12 of them and kind of then deep, you know, dive deeper into the ones that, that are for you. We've sort of, uh, thanks to, um, it's one of the, one of the projects that uh, Russ Miller has done for us in his studio where, you know, you could you hear the ghost note, you can hear the cross stick, you hear the rim shot, you hear a backbeat, you hear a roll, you hear everything that the drum is supposed to to do. <laughs> and yeah, uh, really. and you can really get a sense of, well, okay, now I can really tell which metal models or wood models or the depths or the diameters, what they are doing to the sound. It's kind of kind of a cool destination. Yeah, and you have to do that nowadays. I mean, you can't, physically go even if you go to a store i mean it's pretty rare for a store to have every single model of every company's snares so you really need that and that's again that's the power of growing up as a kid where you know the internet was you know i guess relatively new it was like oh my god i can go and hear um this and that and and i remember the first time i ever saw that where you you could hear the set online and it was actually a set of pork pies and it was on indoor storm which was a music website oh, yeah. which, and and it was like you'd click it and you'd hear this set and uh that just always sticks into my mind as like that that thing so i'm 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 yeah i encourage people to go to the mapex website and um and check that out and um and russ miller is amazing so that's going to be <laughs> obviously the a very good representation of uh of what they sound like yeah and it's if you i don't know you we we, we talked uh earlier about choices and how crazy it can get for us drummers um i think i i talk to a lot of drummers who uh, are either my age or a little bit older and they're like man when i was a kid it was just well i just need a snare drum <laughs> okay uh, and then most of them just one but now it's amazing how that tonal palette can really change the tune change the character of the tune change the part of the tune and yes. you've got um, basically your creativity is your own limit at this point. It's uh, uh, yeah. it's all there for you, and it's really exciting. That's that's great. It is really exciting, and and I think the future is going to be uh, the future is very bright for uh, for Mapex. Um, obviously, it's it's been a great great journey so far. So, um, Jeff. I think this has been great, man. I, I've learned a ton. It's just uh, it's a fascinating company going back to the the KHS and the the the, the schools and the programs. Mm -hmm. It's just really cool that it, it evolved into what it is today. Um, so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Mulvihill, I want to uh, thank you for being on the show, Jeff. And um, I look forward to trying out some uh, some of the Mapex snares and hearing them on the website and all that cool stuff. Oh, uh, thanks a million, Bart. I appreciate it. This was a blast. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning. This is a Gwyn Sound Podcast.